players, referees, and coaches. Without these three participants, rugby could not sustain itself on the pitch in the professional arena, nor most of the amateur arena. We often find ourselves discussing an all-time 15, the greatest player of all time, and even the greatest tries of all time. It's a fun topic. I've even partaken in these discussions with these two previous uploads of mine over here. Today though, it doesn't matter how good the team is, you need a world-class coach to gel them together, build depth, and develop the strategies. In this video, we'll discuss the top five greatest head coaches of all time, showcase some honorable mentions, and discuss their career achievements while attempting to avoid recency bias as best as possible. Without further ado, everybody, let's roll the intro. Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jews and my name's Max, a big thank you to my patrons and a reminder to my new viewers to subscribe if you end up liking this video. Today we're going to discuss the top 5 head coaches of all time in the um, just overall arc of professional rugby and amateur rugby. I'm going to be looking at coaches from both eras and I've also got a few honourable mentions for us to go through. So before we get into my top 5 list, we'll discuss the honourable mentions and we'll show a few slides of their careers so we can um, just have a look at them and just give them a brief shout out. The first of the honourable mentions in no particular order is Brian Lahore, a former All Black captain who coached Whited Upper Bush after retirement before taking charge of the All Blacks for three years. Lahore became the first head coach to win a Rugby World Cup in 1987, so that's definitely enough for the list. Australian rugby's peak of the professional era was the 90s, and Rod McQueen had a big say in this greatness as Brumby's coach for their first two seasons. As Wallaby's coach from 1997 to 2001, McQueen won the Bledisloe Cup in four of the five times he competed for it while lifting the 1999 Rugby World Cup to become the first coach to get their team to get a um, second World Cup. He was just the first World Rugby Coach of the Year in 2001. It also goes without saying to give a mention to Ian McGeekin. He's won 19 trophies as a Scotland and club level coach. McGeekin was also just the second Scottish coach to lead the British and Irish Lions, winning a series over South Africa and Australia were the highlights of his four tours as a head coach. The recency bias on these lists will be found over here though, Simon Middleton absolutely needs a shout out for winning the Women's Six Nations five times since taking charge of England in 2015. Middleton was also World Rugby's Coach of the Year in 2021, though he can't make the list as he yet to win a World Cup. Andy Farrell is another one who will shout out for recency bias too. He's won 13 trophies with Ireland in just four years as a head coach, including the 2023 Grand Slam. Farrell was just the second Irish coach to get the team to rank first in the world, while his win rate of 80% is their most successful of all time. This list also needs a shout out for Wayne Smith, who succeeded well with Benetton, Northampton and the Crusaders before becoming the first person to coach the All Blacks and the Black Ferns. The latter team was turned around by him in a short space to win the 20 22 World Cup, as well as Coach of the Year for himself. As one last mention before the official list, this is Jake White. He won the European Rugby Challenge Cup with Montpellier in 2016, while his recent revival of the Bulls began with a Super Rugby Unlocked title in 2020. White was definitely be on the actual list had it not been for some confusion regarding his contract after he won the 2007 Rugby World Cup. Just one more thing before we get into the proper list as well, there are a few World Cup winning coaches who haven't quite um, done the best overall. I'm counting legacy as the most important part of this whole thing, so the three coaches I'm showing over here who I consider to have actually done more damage than uplifting to their national sides in the long term I haven't considered for the list. Now for number 5 we get to Warren Gatland. 
Gatland is a former All Black whose career as a coach began in 1989. He won five trophies with the Wasps from 2002 to 2005, while he also came back home to coach Waikato, who he used to play for, and he managed to get the Ranfurly Shield in the first ever Air New Zealand Cup, which has since been renamed back to the NPC. He was also the head coach of Ireland while still in his 30s in the late 90s until 2001. Um, he did manage to get a couple trophies, though there is the one blunder of his win rate, which can't exactly get him up too much higher on the list. With Wales, however, he is the greatest head coach they have ever had by far. Wales won a ridiculous amount of trophies with Gatlin in charge, as you can see, and with him as head coach, they just saw such a more cohesive run than previous coaches of the professional era, and they actually didn't do too badly in World Cups compared to what everyone predicted them to do. Gatland was also um, the Lions coach for three different tours, Australia 2013, New Zealand 2017, South Africa 2021, and so he won the Australia series and drawed the New Zealand series, and that means he's the most successful Lions coach of the professional era. As said though, Warren Gatland didn't have the best run when he came back to New Zealand with the Chiefs, whereas he's right now trying to get Wales out of a bit of a hole now that he's returned back there, so I can't get him up too much higher, but wow, what a coaching career this man has had. Absolutely incredible, have to have him on the list. Now for number four, I've got Sir Fred Allen, who was the All Blacks coach from 1966 to 1968. They played 37 games under Allen as the head coach, and they won 30 36 of them, including all 14 tests in a row at the time that was the world record for the most consecutive tests won by a head coach in international rugby. Allen was later knighted for his services to rugby over it here in New Zealand, whereas he managed to get 27 successful Ranfurly Shield defences as the head coach of Auckland. As it was the amateur era back then, the Ranfurly Shield basically determined the value of every single player and every single coach up until they made the All Blacks. So yes, um, Sir Fred Allen the Needle did an amazing amount of stuff for this country. He fought for us in war, he returns to become an All Black himself, and 20 years later after being an All Black himself, he was their most successful head coach of all time. Though another coach ended up overtaking him later down the line, I had to have Sir Fred Allen on this list. We now arrive at the modern day darling Eddie Jones, who actually began coaching all the way back in 1994. He was still in his 30s when he took over the Brumbies in the late 90s after Rob McQueen was elevated to the Wallabies coach and they won the 2001 Super Rugby title under Eddie and man um, a lot of the innovations he made as Brumbies coach especially around the breakdown are still used to this day. He was highly successful as the Wallabies coach as well. Um, no Wallabies coach since Eddie Jones has won the Bledisloe Cup. Obviously he made the 2003 Rugby World Cup final and had a 58% win ratio as their head coach. He he had a very successful spell in Japan too, beginning with Suntory Sun Goliath, where he won two titles. In Japan, he caused the Brighton miracle to happen by working that Japanese national team into overdrive. As you can see, there was a few titles to go along the way. He also ended up having the most successful win percentage of any Japanese coach with 71%, and then he went over, he got bought out from his Stormers contract to take over England, and he had an immediate impact after the failures of Stuart Lancaster. Um, at this point, the only people who don't rate Eddie Jones are English fans who couldn't quite grasp how much he did for that team. As we can see, he's won the most trophies of any England coach in history and also has the highest win rate in history with nearly 73%. So of the eight teams Eddie Jones has coached as a head coach, he's about to um, go back to the Australian men's team and he's also about to start his tenure as coach of the Australian women's team at the same time what an absolute legend. He's contracted to 2027 where he'll be 67 years old. One of the greats. Unfortunately though, the only time he's won a World Cup was as the technical advisor for South Africa in 2007, so third was the highest place I could possibly give him. In its second place, we have Kitch Christie who would absolutely be in first place had his career not been cut short by a really bad um, battle there with blood cancer which killed him after 19 years in 1998. 
While he was still alive though, he had a very successful run with Transvaal, which is um, the Curry Cup version of the Bulls. They won the Curry Cup for the first time since 1972 in 1993, then they backed it up again in 1994. He also won a couple more trophies under there, just building his resume as the coach before he took over the Springboks in 1994, the same year that they were established as the Republic of South Africa and began to use their current national flag. Christie did a phenomenal job in the 1995 World Cup, building off a 1994 series win against Argentina with um, an amazing team that just deserved to win that cup outright. He left a strong legacy that set the tenure and set the tone for what the Springboks would look like in the professional era. Um, having just started in 1992, we only got to see him as a head coach for five or so years after he got dismissed from coaching the Bulls at Super Rugby level due to his illness. But man, what an amazing impact he had on the game. He is by far the greatest head coach that South Africa will ever have as he never lost a test either. He tied Sir Fred Allen's record for the most test wins in a row, though they ended up later getting broken by another Springbok coach. But before we get into the first place, I also do want to say one more thing. Rest in peace to one of the greats, Kitch Christie, what an absolute legend. Now, first place on this list, it is none other than Alistair Kotzier. I'm only joking guys, it's not Alistair Kotzier, it is Sir Graham Henry, the absolute GOAT, the greatest head coach to ever be a head coach. Um, he won two titles with the Blues, getting a back-to-back -back in the first ever two seasons of Super Rugby, and that was built off his four NPC wins with Auckland after he um, left being a headmaster to become a full-time professional head coach. He then went over to Wales, became an absolute celebrity with his 59% win rate and and, um, becoming a quarter finalist for the 1999 World Cup. He also became the first foreign born British and Irish Lions coach during this time period and at the time managed to get the longest ever win streak for a Welsh team, 11 tests, though this was later broken by Warren Gatland. He then returned home to take charge of the All Blacks after a few assistant coaching roles and he was absolutely amazing. He restored Munna to the jersey, he restored pride back into the jersey and most importantly he developed a strong reputation as a head coach who would learn from his mistakes. By learning from his mistakes, he ended up winning a massive amount of trophies. All eight times he competed for the Bledisloe Cup, they won it. They won the Tri-Nations five times. His win rate as head coach was nearly 86%, as you can see. He also won the record amount of World Rugby Coach of the Year awards with five for himself. He was later knighted for his services to rugby, though, after winning the 2011 Rugby World Cup. He looked deep down, examined the failures of 2007, why the All Blacks didn't deserve to get that, why they choked. He built back up from it hardcore, got a far better tight five forward pack into that team, just made an absolutely amazing scrum, looked for talent, and by that World Cup, they knew who the second team was, they knew who the first team was, and in the post Henry era, the All Blacks continues that massive amount of success with his successor, Steve Hansen, inheriting a numerous amount of Ted's goats. Sir Graham Henry also um, didn't retire after um, being 65 years old during that 2011 World Cup win. He's continued assistant coaching roles throughout a very long period of time. He returns to be the assistant coach of Auckland in 2018. He returns to um, go to Argentina, be a technical advisor for them, and he also helped out being a selector and support coach for the 2022 Rugby World Cup winning Black Ferns. Sir Graham Henry is the greatest head coach of all time and I'm going to leave the video there everybody. Make sure to go and support me down below in Patreon or my PayPal tip jar if you want to um, give me a bit of a financial incentive to continue the channel. I've also got a popular Instagram and Twitter that I use very often. Thank you for watching the video everybody. I'll see you later.